Welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and today we're going to have a look at something a little bit different. We're trying, going to try and take the advice up a notch in a way because what we've looked at in the last few videos is how the clues work, how the answer is made up and how the language of the clue gets you there. But what people are often very interested in, particularly things they ask me, are how do you solve so quickly? And I'm going to try and just give you a bit of an insight into the thought process. So I'll have a look at today's puzzle and um, I'll, we'll do the first few clues that I solved when I was solving it earlier. Um, so I look at one across and the clue here is flinch from bells in church. Now, Again, we've got to work on probability. What church is normally doing in a crossword clue is either giving you the abbreviation CE for Church of England or CH as on an ordnance survey map. So because CH has a number of other possibilities that it could be used that could be used to indicate it, it's most likely to be CE. And the in is a fairly clear indicator most of the time to put something in CE. So I'm already thinking within a second or two of reading this clue that it's very likely that I need to put a word for bells into CE to mean a word for flinch. So with the CE there, I have to think of whether I can think of a word that means to flinch or, or flinch from in one across and I did come up with cringe and clearly ring can mean bells I think in the sense of um, the, a ring of bells the sound of bells I think it, it, for the clue to work properly ring has to exactly equate to bells and I think it's the sound that it's talking about there so I immediately go to one down because I've got a C to help shape my thinking here and one down says bind helium in nucleus. Again, the first thing to do is to look for what bits you can be really confident about in the clue. And helium, it's got to be HE, the chemical symbol for helium. So we almost certainly want to put HE into a word meaning nucleus to mean a word meaning bind. So the word meaning nucleus has to be four letters beginning with C, and the nucleus, uh, let's forget the chemical um, specific context. Just think of any word for a nucleus beginning with C. And if you can come up with core, then you can put an HE into that to make cohere. And you can just about see that bind could be a definition of cohere. So we move on to two down, beginning with an I. Now let's see what we can grab at straight away here. Aggrieved nitrogen is put in cocktail of gin and it. Well, gin and it is a little bit old fashioned already, but it's unlikely to be supplying a definition. So, aggrieved will be the definition. Nitrogen, there, another chemical, um, another chemical element. So, almost certainly we want the N that is nitrogen in the periodic table. And cocktail of is perhaps it helps to be familiar with crosswords and crosswordies. If you have a cocktail of something, you can mix it all up. So let's mix up the letters of gin and it. There are eight letters, so we can put an N in it and have nine. And we need a word meaning aggrieved. And I don't know how your conundrum solving skills are, but indignant came very quickly to my mind. Um, looking next at ten across. It starts chair duly. As soon as I've seen the words chair duly, nine different letters, not much sense to be had from chair duly normally. Yes, the definition for the clue could be chair, but it seems very much more likely that chair duly are supplying nine letters. We already know there'll be an H and a D in the answer, and those nine letters will probably be an anagram of the answer. So the rest says, Chair Julie suffers damage. That does look like an anagram indicator. Linked to pressure and movement. Well, it's a scientific term we need. Begins H something D. It's an anagram of Chair Julie, almost certainly. And it doesn't take long to come up if you know the word with hydraulic. 
12 down, we only need one letter to fill, but all of rag, rig, and rope would fit and be perfectly acceptable words. Cocaine, perhaps, unopened in a wrap. Well, that perhaps often indicates that a word with it is providing an example of this thing. So cocaine is an example, very obviously, of a drug. If drug is unopened, doesn't have its opening letter, it gives you rug. Can a rug be a wrap? Well, yes, in one sense, the, um, the kind of furniture sense. Five downs, a long answer, but as I've remarked before, it's sometimes worth tackling the long answers first, because to keep the clues short, there can only be about one idea going into a long answer, whether it's an anagram or the combination of maybe two parts of the answer together, or even a cryptic definition. So as long as the clue is fairly short, and I think three lines for a 14 letter word counts as fairly short, you can be fairly confident that there's something fairly simple going on. And this clue says, like St. Augustine, reformed as a hippo cleric. I don't even know what hippo can mean in the surface of that. I presume it, because of the capital, it's an old town from biblical lands or something. But it doesn't really make any sense. And it looks to me, even without counting the letters, as though as a hippo cleric is going to provide to the anagram fodder. The word reformed is a very strong anagram indicator. So the definition is going to be like St. Augustine. And now this is where it gets a little more difficult because you've only got one C in the word. Um, and I don't know how much you know about St. Augustine. I didn't know a lot, but nonetheless, I was able to come up with the very likely possibility in my, in my mind that he had been an early church leader. And I'm lucky enough, if that's the word, to know the word archiepiscopal, meaning relating to an archbishop and that is an anagram of as a hippo cleric again experience with anagrams convinces me that there's no mistakes there two c's use two p's it looks like it must be right the right sort of vowels um i've put that in i'm 100 percent sure it's right although i don't know much about saint augustine's life and i haven't checked off the individual letters of the anagram it's still certain to be right and um, I had a slightly different experience with Nine Down, where I did have a go at it early on, and I can see exactly how the clue works. Again, worldwide movement ruins it with stale concept. Five and nine. Again, there are 14 letters for an anagram from it plus stale concept. And that's what ruins is saying. It ruins the word it with the words stale concept. This time, given just an L and the fairly oblique definition, worldwide movement, I was thinking of the UN or the Salvation Army or some sort of movement like that that is in use over the world. I couldn't immediately come up with it. And, but when I came back, I did think before moving on that it could be something to do with how the world moves instead, some sort of rotation or the Coriolis effect. <clears throat> As I say, I didn't know the answer immediately, but when I came back to the answer later during the solve and I had some of the letters in place in the second word, in fact, I think I had them all, um, it was very easy to resolve that into plate tectonics. So that was reasonably straightforward as an idea, possibly not easy to solve as an anagram, and certainly not, as I say, for me, with just one letter in place. So I'm going to put up in the corner of the screen my solve as it occurred earlier. And as I say, I had all these thoughts, but obviously I was having them a lot quicker and not talking you through them. So let's just have a look at four across then, which in fact was the last clue that I solved. And that indicates that I didn't really get what to do with it. And here I think it's quite difficult. It says great loss of liquid for flushing toilet. And as I read that, you know, it's quite an impressive surface because a, a crossword clue doesn't normally make that much sense about a plumbing problem, apparently. Um, and I couldn't really see what the 
definition would be? Could it be toilet? Maybe in the sense of makeup and hair or flushing toilet or great? And I wasn't absolutely sure what to do here. Now, when I came back to it later, I had an L and an O. I might have even had an E there. At which point, um, sorry, that should be an E. At which point it was fairly clear to me that the definition was great loss. Um, and the Battle of Waterloo obviously provides children with amusement in terms of its name for many years and clearly crossword setters with the opportunity to make a clue based on water and a flushing toilet. So liquid for flushing there is water in fact and the toilet is loo. It's a very neat clue for an amusing word and it was Napoleon's great loss. Anybody's great loss can be their waterloo. Three downs worth a quick look as well. When I first read this, I had the G in place only, I think. Or maybe the G and the A. Probably just the G. Noble is good currency. And I can see that clearly the definition there is noble. And the word is made up of good. I already have the letter G for good in the grid. And a currency. Now, there are lots of currencies. There are words meaning currency as well. And to fit one of those after G to make a noble, I had a quick think through my brain if any of the kind of ranks of the British nobility would fit five letters beginning with a G for a noble. And I couldn't come up with it. And I gave up at that point. I think when I came back to it later with that A in place, I could see that we needed an adjective meaning noble rather than a specific aristocratic rank. And Rand suggested itself, and of course I do know that the Rand is the South African currency, but there are so many currencies in the world, I wasn't going to kind of run through the ones I knew to try and finish off the word at first. Again, that's a matter of trying to get the puzzle done as fast as possible, and I think you'll see from the solve that I put up that it, was, it went pretty well in that area. Um, 13 across. Again, all these letters are very helpful to getting the clue. There aren't that many words that are 11 letters long and begin D something T something I. Causing harm began the clue, and immediately I know that the answer is going to be detrimental, unless there's some word with a similar beginning to detrimental. But worth checking the rest of the clue for the teeth, dental, eating alien, ET, marge, well, it helps to know that marge can be an old word for margin. And the clue isn't about eating a butter substitute at all. Um, and detrimental is the answer there. So to sum up the lesson, it is that when you look at a clue, try and find a bit of it that you know what job that bit is doing. Even if you don't know what letters it specifically gives you, to parse the clue, as we say, helps explain which bits are doing what, what you have to put in something else, uh, or what you have to anagram. And once you know that, then, especially if you have letters already in the grid, checking letters, you can use that to help plan how your brain searches for synonyms to come up with the answer to the definition. And that really makes the cryptic crossword a much more straightforward beast. Um, in case you want to see any of the uh, clues further down as the puzzle has progressed, there they are. Um, not going through them all individually, do feel free to um, access the puzzle and have a go at the rest yourself um, if you haven't looked at my solution. And um, thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again next time.